How you doing today? This is Renard S. Boyce, the Mortgage Doctor, here on WPCE Studios. I'm live in the studio today broadcasting. We're also filming as we speak for my website, freshword.org. If you want some fresh ministry news, if you want to have your voice heard through the public, the means of the internet, you can join Fresh Word at www.freshword.org. We're extending our open arms to all of you within the ecclesiastical community who may not have an opportunity to express yourself, may not get a chance to get up on Sunday morning. You may have a mind ministry, a music project, a CD or DVD that you want to get out to the public. And guess what? You can promote it on my new ministry website, www.freshword.org. So we want to get that out. And now we want to move into today's message about the new improved reverse mortgage programs, okay? We want to talk about reverse mortgages for the seniors today. Renard S. Boyce speaking. Of course, you can reach me at 757-567-6700, 757-567-6700. Well, you've been listening to the various segments about reverse mortgages, the benefits thereof. Don't need a payment. 62 years old, you need to be. The more equity you have, the better. The older you are, the better. You don't have to make a payment. I'll say that again. That's one of the most significant facets and aspects about the reverse mortgage. But while we're talking, here's something that I really want to sit down and talk about. And this is not to try to frighten or intimidate uh, my seniors. But we really need to take a serious look at this new Republican agenda. We need to take a really serious look at the new Republican agenda. And the Bible says that my people perish due to a lack of knowledge. And oftentimes because of fear and of a lack of knowledge and proper proper information being disseminated into the community, we kind of just stick our heads in the ground and hope for the best. Well, the hoping for the best is not the same type of hope that we place in Jesus Christ. We hope in Christ because he is the hope of glory. He is the, the incarnation. He is the revelation of those things that all of the saints hope for. He became the revelation. He became the legitimization of the prophets and all of those who came before him. And he has said, lo, it is of me who comes in the volume of the book. Lo, it is speaking of me. So when we hope in Christ, there is a guarantee to that hope because that hope got up out the grave and because it got up out the grave and sits at the right hand of the Father, we also have hope of blessedness of hope because that hope has already been legitimized. That hope has been substantiated. But the type of hope that many of us try to have is a type of, I don't know what else I'm going to do hope. A sinking ship kind of hope. And we don't have to hope in things like that because we know that this place, America, and I'm going to go biblical for a minute. We know that this place called America is on a collision course, right, with, with, the, with, the, with the kingdom of hell itself. This place called America is on a collision course. If you go to Psalms 9, it talks about a nation that abandons God. It talks about a nation that turns its back on God. And it says that it's going to have its place. All the nations that abandon the word of God, all the nations that turn against the poor, all the nations that reprise against the least of these, the motherless, the fatherless, the widow, the infant, the elderly, all nations that have practiced the botry against the word of God and against his people that have crushed his people, as Malachi said and Amos said, and eaten them like a piece of bread. All such nations are going to have their day with the king. All such nations are going to find themselves in the pit of the lake of fire and they're going to be dismantled slowly but surely. And let's just be real for a minute. We see the demantelization of America right now. We see America coming apart at its very seams. We see America coming apart at its cores. We see the stitching coming right out of this nation because anytime a nation starts to turn its back on the least of these, it is proof proof positive that that nation is on its way to collapse. Anytime Anytime we see a rise in taxes, anytime we see an increase, uh, the, uh, increase in taxes, anytime we see a devaluation of the money system, anytime we see a rise, I got to go here, anytime we see a rise in homosexuality, anytime we see a, a super extended divorce rate, anytime we see a lack of respect for legitimate authority, legal authority, parental authority, that nation is on its way to demise and ruin. It happened in Rome. It happened in Greece. It happened in Egypt. It happened in Mesopotamia. If you know your history, all nations that follow this course found their way to ruin. So then we take a, a nation 
that supposedly has built its foundation on the word of God, but yet now afflicts the poor, afflicts the infant, afflicts the widow, the widow, afflicts the, the homeless, afflicts, afflicts the motherless, afflicts the, the fatherless. When we see a nation that has moved itself into such a mental, psychological, and spiritual posture, then we know that these are truly some praying times. And so I'm not talking about a reverse mortgage or any other mortgage just to kind of scare you or get you hyped up, but I'm saying this is a season that you need to hold on to and have as much of your resources as you possibly can. I'm teaching I'm teaching um, biblical economical principles. So we're going to say this is biblical finance. See, because one thing we don't use the Bible to talk about are biblical financial principles. Yet Jesus talked as much about money as he did about salvation. So this is a time where you need to be as insulated as humanly possible. Whether it be a reverse mortgage, whether it be a cash out refinance, you see your values fall you see it becoming harder and harder to get access to capital. You know, I had a person that was emailing me back and forth on my Facebook page, and then I won't call her name Brenda Brom, but the interesting thing was, while she was emailing me back and forth, and I was making the same position on my internet Facebook page, she was stating that I obviously had no appreciation of the Republican Party. The Republican Party of, of, of the time of Lincoln that, that set the slaves free, and of course the time of, of Frederick Douglass, that Republican Party, is not not the same Republican Party today. The Republican Party today is not even the party of Reagan. But we're trying to see a resurrection of the mentality of Reagan. We're trying to see a resurrection of Reagan and all other super conservative, hyper conservative philosophies and mentalities and positions and programs in the face of the current Republican candidates, but especially one in particular that gives me particular calm and put not calm but reason for, for alarm, and that's this gentleman, uh, Governor Rick Perry of Texas. And if you put this devil together with that other devil, um, um, Tom Ryan or Ryan, uh, the Paul Ryan, thank you, sir. Paul Ryan up there in Congress who wants to write legislation that they're going to charge seniors six thousand five to six thousand um, dollar in in these in these so-called vouchers that they're going to have to pay. That you're going to have to pay into the system. Now, if you got to pay into the system, and then they said, well, we're going to make it easier for you. So what we're going to do is let you find your own insurance company. See, this is nothing but a trick of the enemy. You know, we want you to have choices. No, what we want to do is to break the backs of the poor and that's the problem and if you go into second Peter it said that in these last days in these last days men's hearts would wax cold the Bible said that men's hearts would wax cold that men will become hardy and they will become lovers of themselves now having men fall in love with themselves having men fall in love with their own agenda having men fall in love with the sound of their own trumpet having men hearts wax cold that the corporations haven't had enough money that the, that the oil company Exxon made a hundred million dollars profit in one quarter and how much is enough yet you're taking everything you can you're taking away all the programs all the social programs and we run around here like Henny Penny talking about the sky is falling no the sky is falling is true and the walls are caving in I said the sky is falling and the walls are caving in so this is no time for backward thinking this is time for forward thinking this is time for insulation this is time for consecration this is time for sanctification so I'm not going to just talk and preach mortgages and not preach the real deal and what we really need to be doing is having our eyes on the sky and looking up because the Bible said when you see these things look up when you see the manifestation of these type of events look up and all you have to do is turn on the television and you see a nation that is becoming colder and colder and we also I'm going to say this while I'm talking and this is going to be on my internet www.freshword.com I am appalled that we as a nation of ministers are not praying for President Barack Obama and I have a strong suspicion that many ministers are because I know many of us are let me let me rephrase that but when I look at ministers in national prominence who have national platforms and national audiences I have not seen one of them come out and ask for a national day of prayer fasting and turning down our plates for the president who happens to be cut from our loins. He happens to be our Joseph. He is our Joseph. He came out from amongst us. Yes, he did. 
And yet we have totally abandoned him. Just like if you go into Isaiah and it said that with God deemed Jesus to be stricken because he had borne our affirmities. No, I'm not calling him our Jesus, but I'm saying that he has been stricken. He has been bruised. He's been battered. He's been bewildered. He's been dismayed. He's been disinherited. He's been talked about. He's been kicked. He's been lied on. He's been persecuted. Everything. Every possible insult that could be perpetrated against a human being, he has endured, and yet he has not opened his mouth and said a mumbling word. He's never even complained. He's never even cried about it. And they have taken every nail that they could, every nail of character assassination, every nail of abuse, every nail of torment, every nail of deceit, and tried to nail him to a cross, yet not any major national leader has come out and said anything in his defense so for my local pastors let's let's talk about this thing let's pray about this thing because since we always quote that scripture that that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray i would hear from heaven and heal their land then this is a time for the healing of the land but we also have to pray for those that are in leadership and he is the supreme leader not only of america but the leader of the free world yet we have left him prayerless we have not coveted him in our prayers and for that i think is an abomination nation and a great miscarriage of justice on our part as ministers so tune in for more of this on www.freshword.org i want you to make sure that you are covering yourself from a financial standpoint. Temple Mortgage has all kinds of programs. If your score is low as a 550, call me. If it's low as a 540, call me. Cash out, refinance. Some of y'all still got 11, 12% rates. Some of y'all still got 8, 9, 10% rates. I'm working on some right now. Give me a call. 757-567-6700. 757-567-6700. Give me a call. Love you to life. God bless each and every one of you. Look forward to seeing you on the other side of the Jordan. God bless you all.